الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين حبيب إله العالمين أبي القاسم مصطفى محمد وألا أهل بيته التيبين الطاهرين المعصومين المظلومين الغر الميامين الذين أذهب الله عنهم الرجس وطهرهم تطهيرا السلام عليك يا ابن رسول الله السلام عليك يا ابن نبي الله السلام عليك يا ابن خديجة الكبرى السلام عليك يا ابن علي المرتضى السلام عليك يا ابن فاطمة الزهراء السلام عليك يا ثار الله وابن ثار والوتر الموتور السلام عليك يا أبا عبد الله الحسين أيها الشهيد المذلوم المقتول الأتشان السلام على الحسين وعلى لي ابن الحسين وعلى أولاد الحسين وعلى أصحاب الحسين اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد Respected brothers and sisters, lovers and mourners of the symbol of justice and the symbol of unity. Sayyidi Shuhada Aba Abdullah Al Hussein alayhimu salatu wa salam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We extend our heartfelt condolences to the Imam of our time, the avenger of the tragedy of Karbala and the injustices brought upon Ahlul Bayt السلام, that started well before Karbala, the son of Zahra, the son of Rasulullah, Imam Sahib al-Asri wa zaman Ajlallah alayhi ta'ala farajullahu sharif During these fateful days and nights, these days and nights of tears, of pain and reflection, as we seek in our humble way here in South Africa and in Cape Town to console the grieving hearts of our beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam and our mother Fatma to Zahra sallamullahi alayha for that Ashura, for what happened on that Ashura which is like no other day as Imam al Hassan alayhi salam, the grandson of our beloved Prophet, said to Abu Abdullah when he was on his deathbed, when he was suffering, and Imam al Hussein alayhi salam was sad. He said, Oh, my brother, what has happened? He says, Ya Abu Abdullah, la yawmaka yawmak, ya Abu Abdullah. No day will be like your day. There can be no day like Ashura. It is in that light that we gather and that we mourn. And that we want to also be grateful to the opportunity, the Ahlul Bayt Foundation of South Africa for providing us the opportunity to also share some thoughts and in the process to honor Aba Abdullah alayhi salam. Our Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, and it's a famous hadith that is narrated this year or this time of the year, Husaynun minni wa ana min al Husayn. أحب الله من أحب الحسين حسين is from me and I am from Hussein Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves those or the one who loves Hussein brothers and sisters Imam Hussein alayhi salam manifested all the prophetic values of sublime morality at Karbala before Karbala but Karbala symbolizes that which he manifested and actually took a stance to save those prophetic values, hence Rasulullah doesn't only stop and say Hussein is from me, he says I am from Hussein. Save those prophetic values in light of an Islam or Islam that was being abused as our respected leader Mawlana Sayyid Aftab has been saying in the past few nights that Islam was abused at the behest of political power. Imam Hussein came to save that, to show to the Ummah and the dead Ummah at the time, a dead Ummah which included, sadly, even people who spent time with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, people whose fathers spent time with the Prophet. 
to show to them what was happening. Imam alayhi salam said, Surely the aim of my stand is not inspired by vain exaltation. And it is also not the quest of kingdom or power. Neither is it to cause dissension and corruption, nor is it to wrong anybody unjustly. When we take the name of Karbala and Imam Hussein alayhi salam for any cause or struggle, that we want to wage, whether it be in our communities, whether it be on the globe, whether it be in our homes, whether it be with our own selves. These are the criteria we ought to look at. Ask ourselves, are we doing it with this intention? Is this entering? Can it be perceived that this is the case? These words of Imam alayhi salam are enough, brothers and sisters, in themselves to prove that the stance of Imam Hussein was neither for the lust of power nor for any personal gain. It was to safeguard the religion of Islam, of his grandfather, sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, from the clutches of Yazid, the son of Muawiyah, la'natullah alayhi, who was hell-bent on distorting the real image of Islam. As, as far as the real motive behind Abu Abdullah's uprising against Yazid is concerned, it can never be defined in a better way then the words of Imam Hussein alayhi salam himself when he said, the purpose of my stand is the reformation of my grandfather's nation, Ummati Jaddi. I intend to enjoin the goodness and forbid evil. I want to emulate my grandfather, the Holy Prophet, and my father, Ali bin Abi Talib. That is what we saw in each and every minute aspect. We were listening to lectures we can pick that up in each and every minute aspect of Karbala and even the build up to Karbala, you will see that this is the example that he emulated. Before heading to Karbala, Imam Hussain alayhi salam said, a person of my type can never accept allegiance of a person like Yazid. These words of Imam also present the real purpose of that stance against tyranny. He presented before us, brothers and sisters, a lesson to differentiate between a just and an unjust system, to differentiate between a sober struggle for that which is right and a progressive struggle and a populist struggle done for political gain and power mongering in the name of struggle and revolution. This unjust system that Imam stood up against had reached its culmination. System of Yazid and Banu Umayyah was one that had reached a culmination. It reached a boiling point. As a result of the Ummah, the Ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam unfortunately undermining and humiliating Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam. They cut the roots of the religion of Islam. We've still not recovered, unfortunately. That is why reviving Karbala, doing the majalis of Abu Abdullah al-Hussein alayhi salam is so important because we revive that spirit. We get an opportunity to share with people who have been denied that opportunity what Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam really stood for, what is true Islam. Justice, we were asked the theme of this particular, and, 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 and Imam stance, as we said, was one of justice. Justice was very dear to the Ahlul Bayt, alayhi salam. Even Imam Ja'far Sadiq, alayhi salam, says, he's reported to have saying, justice is more delicious than honey, softer than butter, and more sweet-smelling like musk. There are various forms of, 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 of justice. Not only, sometimes we think that taking a stance for justice is just to stand up for a global struggle like Palestine and Nigeria. Very, very important struggles. We're not denying. But that is not what purely what justice is about. The, 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 there are various forms of justice which are articulated in our tradition. The late Imam Muhammad Shirazi Rahmatullah alayhi indicates that, that there are, that 
that justice, there's justice to God, justice to society, justice towards the dead, and justice of rulers. And he says that all of these four aspects of justice were manifested in its entirety in the stance of Abu Abdullah Hussein alayhi salam. It's more than just a slogan. And it is this holistic justice that actually ends up uniting, because we have asked to be speaking about unity as well. It's this holistic sense of justice that Imam Hussein alayhi salam manifested and that Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam stood for that actually unites the sincere and dedicated people to stand in its defense. Without a holistic approach to justice, we'll not be able to find unity around that particular cause. Just causes, sadly, respected brothers and sisters, particularly during our time as we can see, just causes even will fail to attract people and followers and even keep those standing for that cause together and will actually become, can actually become oppressive in its nature when the cause is not understood, when, when one does not understand what is justice, but also when unity is not actively pursued, when every single aspect, every single act in the cause for that justice and that movement of justice is not done in a way that's in line with the teachings of Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam, which they've inherited from the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Karbala and Imam Hussein, as I say, as we said, is the best symbol and opportunity for genuine unity amongst humanity, the broader Muslim public, as well as amongst ourselves as the Shia of Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam in our very own country, as a minority community, facing various challenges, our unity is paramount. It is much needed. The pure sublime morality of the stance of Abu Abdullah al-Hussein alayhi salam and the human tragedy around the, 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 the event of Karbala or the spectacle of Karbala naturally brings hearts together. Or let me say it brings hearts of the sincere ones together. Only a heart that is hard, only a heart that is occupied with, with hatred and fitna and wanting to abuse Islam will not be drawn to this tragedy once the person knows about it and will focus on side issues which divide us. The tragedy in itself, the remembrance of the tragedy in itself brings the hearts together, it has that ability. So Muharram is the perfect opportunity for us to build unity amongst ourselves. As a result of this tragedy, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam is reported to have said, or has said, as a result of the tragedy of Hussein, such a warmth will be kindled in the hearts of the believers that shall not become cold till the day of resurrection. Abu Hamza asking Imam Sajjad alayhi salam, he once asked, for how long will you cry for Ashura? Imam said that Ya'qub alayhi salam cried so much so that he became blind for a son who was still alive. But I, I, Sajjad, saw family members butchered on the plains of Karbala. And I remember the way my aunts ran from tent to tent. When Imam Rida alayhi salam reached the holy city of Qum, the first thing that Imam Rida alayhi salam did was to establish Ten nights of Majalis of Abu Abdullah al Hussein. 114 poets are reported to have graduated from Imam Baqir alayhi salam's class, and he would tell them to memorize eulogy on Imam al Hussein alayhi salam and recite them to the Muslims. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, as we must not underestimate the power of these Majalis in bringing us together, he says, O Fatima, to his daughter, Every eye shall be weeping on the day of resurrection, except the eye which has shed tears over the tragedy of my Hussein. For surely that eye shall be laughing and shall be given the glad tidings of the bounties and comforts of paradise. Imam Ali alayhi salam said to Ibn Abbas, he says, once, we, once when we happen to pass by Karbala, 
He narrates that Isa alayhi salam, Nabi Isa, sat down and began to weep. His disciples who were observing him followed suit and they also began to weep. But not comprehending the reason for the behavior, they asked Nabi Isa, he said, O Spirit of God, what is it that makes you weep? Isa said, do you not know what land this is? He said, no, this is the land on which the son of Prophet Ahmad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam will be killed. So the tradition even comes before Rasulullah. Abu Basir narrates that Imam Baqir alayhi salam said, the humans, the jinn, the birds, and the wild beasts mourned and wept over the tragedy that befell Hussein ibn Ali. This is why we see the unity is manifest. This is why we see non-Muslims commemorating Abba Abdullah al Hussein. When I had the honor and pleasure and in all humbleness to visit Karbala and Arba'in, and many of you have, you would have seen Christians going to the shrine of Imam Hussein alayhi salam in their numbers. You would have seen Hindus who have read the amounts of poetry and love that has been expressed even by non-Muslims. Even our brothers from the outside of the Shia, the majority, we see commemorations. In fact, this year we must commend. There's been a plethora of online lectures and discussions about Abba Abdullah Hussein alayhi salam. But also Imam Hussein alayhi salam unites, unites the Shia of Ahlul Bayt. Unity which we said is so much important. The commemoration and the symbol of Hussein has the ability to unite. It does not divide. And, and Ziyarat Ashura sets the tone and the basis for this, brothers and sisters. Where we say, I am at peace with those who are at peace with you. Ana silmun liman salamakum wa ana harbun liman harabakum ya Aba Abdullah. We're at war with those. That is the criteria as to whom to unite with and whom to disassociate with and how to keep ourselves together. But sadly, respected brothers and sisters, and one does not want to speak to these issues, but it's important. The platform Arba, Karbala provides us with to also honestly reflect. There are various threats to our unity. And especially when shaitan sees that there's a path of truth that is flourishing, that is when the agents of shaitan will enter. There are various threats to our unity as Shia. And those threats sadly become manifested and reach its peak during Muharram, when it should not be entering. Muharram is a time when our hearts should be together. But the threats to our unity enter and people are active during this particular period, to divide. This is because our understanding of Karbala at times is not a holistic one. Understanding of justice is not a holistic one. It becomes one-dimensional. And that gives rise to these threats of disunity. When we'll start fighting with each other as to who has the correct understanding of Karbala and Imam Hussein, who is more revolutionary in understanding Imam Hussein alayhi salam? Some are agents of the West because they speak on an akhlaqi issue. We'll then describe them as such in a very one-dimensional fashion. We start to fight about expressions of love of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. If someone is critical of a way in which we do things, we say, no, no, he's, he's out of the fault. If we do something and ulama have sanctioned something in one particular way, we then, we, we spend our time, unfortunately the time that we spend squabbling could be time that is spent to promote the message of Imam Hussein alayhi salam to those who have not had an opportunity to listen to the message. We use these opportunities, sadly brothers and sisters, to undermine the dignity of our ulama, because without our ulama's dignity and izza being protected, we are not going to be able to be united as a community. Try to embarrass them, putting up photographs of ulama, meetings, this and that, and then saying, no, no. We create fitna 
But do we remember that Imam Hussein alayhi salam was so passionate about protecting the izza of his companions that on the that on the eve of Ashura he calls them to the tent and he says, You may leave, you have been so loyal to me, you don't need to stay. He turns off the lighting so that he doesn't see them and they don't feel embarrassed. So much so he tried to protect the izza of his companions. But sometimes we, in our ego and misdirection, we create fitna by trying to bring down the, the izza of our ulama and of our, and our respected brothers and sisters. Unity requires humility and a will to be led. Look at the example of Hur bin Yazid al-Rayahi. He was humble when he went. He didn't enter the army of Imam Hussein and demand that, no, I want the same position that I had when I was in Yazid's army. He understood the leadership. He had humility. Unity means that when we join causes, we join for the right reasons. We are active for the correct reasons. We saw people wanting to join Imam Hussein alayhi salam along the way. They said they'll offer this, they'll offer that, but we're not willing to go and be martyred. They wanted to be, some wanted to join because they wanted to say, no, only if Imam Hussein wins, we'll be part. Imam once said, no, no, stay away. We have enemies. The enemies like Umar bin Sa'ad who preferred dunya. Even though Imam called them to the truth, they were promised the governorship of Ray. So brothers and sisters, we need to steer clear from those issues that divide us during this period. We dangerously impose also race and narrow nationalism on the rich tradition of Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam and Karbala and at times in a very, very paternalistic manner. Even the issue of unity, brothers and sisters, even the issue of unity, unity with the broader community and the broader Islamic world, sadly gets abused during this particular period by ourselves as a source of sowing divisions amongst ourselves. When we find that there are scholars, some of us, who speak about the history of Karbala and what led and the zulm against Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam, then you are deemed to be people of ta'ifiyah or sectarianism, even though it may be done in a respectable manner. People will raise this banner and it's done with that Banu Umayyah mentality of trying to create division and politics of power in the name of saying, no, we are offending others. Unity with broader community is possible, but it needs to be based on not saying that our sectarian or our identity as followers of Ahlul Bayt must be compromised, but respecting each other's readings of Islamic history and approaches to commemorating with respect. We know that Imam Baqir alayhi salam has said, and we'll never deny where he says, since the death of Rasulullah, we Ahlul Bayt have been humiliated, made distant, have been deprived and killed, and made to leave our hometown, and we felt frightened for our blood and the blood of our followers. The cheaters, through their lies, got nearer to the leaders, judges, and governors in every city, and our enemies told false and invalid traditions relating to their past leaders and quoting riwaya that were never said. They only wanted to humiliate us and wanted to accuse us of falsehood and wanted to get nearer to their leaders through their lies. After the passing away of Hassan alayhi salam, this was common during the time of Muawiyah. At every time in every city, she were killed. He goes on to say that in the time of Hajjaj ibn Yusuf, the Shia, for every doubt and accusation, they were killed. And he, he, he would say, Hajjaj, when killing them, he would say that I killed them because they were Shia of Hussein. Imam Hussein, our attachment to Imam Hussein alayhi salam has been associated by the enemies of Hussein alayhi salam to be a means to kill our people. It should, act, it should be that rallying call to unite us. Unity, brothers and sisters, is important. 
Imam Rida alayhi salam says, some of those who claim the affection for us, the Prophet's household, are more dangerous for our Shia than the ordeal of Dajjal. And the narrator asks, he says, how do they become dangerous? Imam says, they support our enemies and antagonize our followers. We must be very, very careful. Imam Hussein alayhi salam's resistance and unity of bringing people together was also possible because of the akhlaq the way in which we speak to each other, the way in which we engage with each other, brothers and sisters, that builds unity. The mercy that we have softens the heart. We've, there are so many examples when Imam, of the mercy that he had at Karbala, we saw with Hur again, when the army of Imam Hussein alayhi salam and the followers were at the river banks, they had access to water, Soldiers of Yazid, those with Hur, they wanted water. Imam gave access. Even though he knew they were going to deny. We found even that if you look at the behavior of Muslim bin Aqil, when he was in Kufa, how he refused to assassinate Ibn Ziyad when Ibn Ziyad was visiting Hani ibn Urwa. We saw Imam's attitude when he got Zuhair. And Zuhair eventually joined, even though he was not from the background of Ahlul Bayt followers. The way in which he treated Zuhair. Imam Hussein even going and listening to the people of Kufa. Knowing and what he was warned about them and what had happened there before. Still going selflessly, sacrificing for the sake of this ummah. Still went to Karbala. Giving his six month old baby. For the sake of the ummah, for the sake of others. That's a show of unity. The akhlaq, the decency that he had. Even before Karbala, when he was young, and there was an old man that was making wudu wrongly, and him and Imam Hassan alayhi salam corrected the man by one of them doing it wrongly and one doing it correctly, not telling him you are wrong. Imam even engaged in such a respectful manner with that accursed Umar bin Sa'ad, to try to avert fighting, to save him from Jahannam to the extent that to some extent there was some conscience that Imam was pricking and that irritated and angered Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad, la'anatullah alayhi. Ibn Ziyad was so enraged by the attitude of Ibn Sa'ad and called for shimmer to whom he gave a letter to be delivered to Umar bin Sa'ad. In fact, it was on this, the sixth day of Muharram, or other narrators say the sixth night of Muharram, that brothers and sisters, a letter came to Umar bin Sa'ad from Ibn Ziyad. We will conclude with this way. He says, O son of Sa'ad, I have known that you spend whole nights out of your camp along with Hussein ibn Ali near the banks of Euphrates. You hold friendly discourses with him on various topics and show him mildness. Now as soon as this reaches you and you read it, see that no drop of water is carried to Hussein's camp. During these days, this is when Hussein salam was blocked from water. If you mind your own welfare, post your men between the Euphrates and Hussein's soldiers. Attack and destroy them. Destroy and allow the use of water of Euphrates by the Christians and the Jews, but refuse it to Hussein, to his relatives, to that baby Ali Azgar, to Sakina, and to his friends. Guard the bank so that they may not be able to take any water in return for what they have done to Uthman, who was so badly treated. I know that harming dead bodies does no good or evil. But I command you, O son of Sa'ad, to trample, to trample their bodies <laughs> under the hooves of horses. Wallahi al -adeem. Body that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam hugged and kissed, trampled by hooves of horses. <laughs> under the hooves of horses after you have killed them. If you are reluctant to carry out my orders, hand over the charge of my forces to the bearer Shimr bin Lildoshan and come to me 
to wait for my future orders. As soon as you have received this letter, Umar ibn Sa'ad, seal the banks of the river and see that no drop of water reaches the throat of Hussein and Hussein's camp. Brothers and sisters, this was Karbala. This was for the sake of unity, for the sake of peace, for our sake, for the sake of the oppressed. This is what Hussein and Ahlul Bayt salam endured when he sends, when Hassan salam sends Qasim of the Qasim sees Awn and Muhammad and Qasim is dressed in white. Qasim is dressed because his mother Um Farwa gives him the dress that Hassan salam wore. And Qasim is martyred and Hussein salam responds and Hussein alayhi salam he stumbled and he says, My God, what have these cowards done to Qasim? He says, My Qasim, your mother had sent you out dressed as a groom. Now you are returning to your mother with your body cut in pieces. <laughs> as he was riding back towards the camp, Hussein then says, By God, Ya Allah, has there been an instance where an uncle had to carry his own nephew's body in such a state? Brothers and sisters, let us prepare ourselves and our hearts to remember Qasim ibn al-Hassan, to remember Qasim ibn al-Hassan this evening and another night, to remember Hussein ibn Ali. Let's consistently send our condolence to Fatima to Zahra alayhi salam and pray that inshallah the barakah of the majalis of Abu Abdullah alayhi salam unites our hearts, brings us together because the purpose the treasure that Ahlul Bayt salam, and Hussein possesses is something that can guide our society in a polarized world, in a suffering world. It can guide society. It's a source of hope, but it's only through these majalis that we'll be able to revive that spirit and bring our hearts together. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to hasten the reappearance of our Imam alayhi salatu wassalam. وأجل الله تعالى عليهم شرفه وظهورك إن شاء الله. We thank you, brothers and sisters, for your attention and for listening to us, sharing some of our ideas on the life and the struggle of Abu Abdullah al-Hussein alayhi salam. Salawat ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad.